1919. Lipton tea, the brisk tea, and Lipton soups, those delicious money-saving soups present Arthur Godfrey's Talent Scouts. Lipton soups are thrifty, best that you can buy. Always save you lots of M-O-N-E-Y. Lipton tea, the brisk tea, drink it every day. Now here comes Arthur Godfrey, the talent's on its way. And now, here's that man himself, down on the farm in Virginia, Arthur Godfrey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, George Bryan. And you, Archie Blyer, in the orchestra. And hello to all the rest of you. It was awfully nice of you to come down to the theater tonight, and nice of you to tune in around the country. Tonight, I think I have for you only two words. Brrr. <laughs> boy, oh boy, is it cold down here in Virginia. B-R-R-R-R. It, it, it get down to about 63 down here this afternoon. And believe me, that's cold when you've not been used to it. And the rain has just been coming on and going off and coming on. And we're sitting here outdoors asking, good Lord, please hold it off for 30 more minutes because we never could get the lights inside and we'd be in a terrible shape. Please, let's do this one here. Okay, next week we'll have it ready so we can go in if we have to. You know, uh, this, um, this cold weather has brought a, an unexpected fragrance to the countryside. I wish I could impart it to you some way. Uh, over the television. It would be a wonderful thing if you could just get the fragrance of the mothballs in uh, my cameraman Duffy's long underwear tonight. <laughs> it's just, it's a beautiful thing to behold. But the cold doesn't bother me, not in my fur-lined shorts that I have. It, it wasn't very nice weather for the anniversary, though. You knew that it was an anniversary? Oh, yes, this was the... Uh, the 461st anniversary of the uh, day that Columbus sailed for America, 461 years ago. And I, in honor of the occasion, have written a, per a poem. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, fought wind and storm and angry crew, discovered the land of the brave and the true, and then back to inform his queen he flew. You know what she said? So what else is new? <laughs> so this is the Lipton. <laughs> That's a silly, huh? This, this is the Lipton show, sponsored by Lipton tea, Lipton soups, and Frosty, among the many good things that Lipton makes. And I think it would be a very good thing if we would meet our first talent scout who, according to my notes, is a Mr. Ira Jossen. Hello there, Mr. Jossen. How are you tonight? Fine, Arthur. Well, let's get ourselves straightened out in the screen. That's a boy. Well, you're a nice-looking young fella. How old are you? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. And uh, what do you do for a living? I work in a theater ticket office, Mackey's Ticket Office. Mackey's Theater Ticket Office? That's right, Arthur. You can uh, get tickets for shows for us, can yes, you? Yes, sir. Well... Do you know my friend Georgie Solitaire? Yes, I do. Do you? Mm -hmm. You see him, give him my love, will you? I sure will. He's one will. grand guy. You know, he, he has a reputation of being able to get tickets for anything, any occasion, any time. Somebody asked him just the day before the coronation of the Queen the other day if they could get tickets for there, you know, and he called up in a little while and says, I got two in the rear abbess for you, but uh, they're not together. <laughs> 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 Archie Blyer, you know, he, he knows a lot of people in the theater business. He, oh, yeah. he says he's going to get me two tickets to South Pacific now, any day. But uh, tell me, you folks will have to be a little faster. There isn't that much time. <laughs> uh, Ira, are you married? No, I'm not, Arthur. Not married, huh? Well, there's no use discussing your children. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a little lady in mind, maybe? Yes, I do. Oh, good. Is she watching tonight? Yes, she is. Well, I hope so. I, uh, 
She's going to see a very handsome man. I hope somebody takes a picture of that and shows it to you. They're a very good-looking fellow. Thank you. Tell me now, uh, whom did you bring us? Well, three fellows I met in the service, and they're known as the Drifters. The Drifters? Yes, sir. You met them in the service. What branch were you in? Well, we were all stationed down at Camp Gordon in the uh, Signal Corps. I see, I see. And they, 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 they had been together before they came in the Army, or did they meet in the Army? No, they met in the service. Is that so? Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, since their discharge, have they been working professionally? Well, after they got out of the service, they went down to Miami and played at the Casablanca Hotel and uh, mm -hmm. the uh, Rainbow Room down there. Uh huh. And from there, they went to Canada and played in the Elmwood Room and the Barclay Hotel. Oh, yes. Have you ever been on TV? Yes, they played at the uh, store club. The store club? Mm hmm That's a nice place. <laughs> Golly, I've forgotten what it looks like in there. I haven't been in there for so long. Well, thanks ever so much, Ira. It was nice of you to bring these boys down here. Let's put them in the Lipton spotlight and see what the folks think. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen, the Drifters. <laughs> He's just a sentimental gentleman from Georgia, Georgia. Gentle with the ladies all the time, rooty doo 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 And when he comes to love him, he's a real professor. Yes, sir. Just a Mason Dixon Valentine, Valentine, Valentine. Oh, can't you see those Georgia peaches hanging around him now? And what this fella teaches, nobody else knows how. He's just a sentimental gentleman from Georgia, Georgia. Channel with the ladies all the time Cause he's strictly from Georgia Georgia No peace of mind Just an old sweet song Keeps Georgia on my mind Be Cause there ain't no devil's got a claim on sweet Georgia Brown. Hey, hey! Two left people don't so need a sweet Georgia Brown. Go, go! Tell us I wanna die for a sweet Georgia Brown. Telling you why, Tell why. you know I don't lie. Not much, not much. When my baby takes a walk downtown, <laughs> there ain't nobody who can hold her down. <laughs> fellas, she can't get our fellas. She ain't met Georgia named her, Georgia claimed her, sweet Georgia Brown. Nobody could make Georgia true, that is, until she met up to that sentimental gentleman from Georgia. I take that Georgia gentle with the lady. Three kind of nice looking fellas, weren't they? Look like the kind of guys you'd like to know better. I've been getting complaints from the director. He says there's too much of the top of my head showing. What's the matter here? <laughs> says I get too much top. Oh, yeah. Also, I notice in the speaker here, I have a monitor here too where I can watch what's going on. Uh, I would suggest to those of you who are at home with your TV sets, that if you turn up the brighter a little bit, you won't get so many of my freckles. Try it. <laughs> well, they got a commercial here that the agency sent to me to want me to talk about iced tea. <laughs> Boy, are they forever nuts tonight? No, I'm not going to talk about iced tea. I'm going to have a cup of hot tea. You know the easiest and the quickest way to make it? Just get yourself a cup and a tea bag. That's all you have to have. Just a cup and a Lipton tea bag. And they come in the box and you notice they're very, very simple to take apart. It's just a flip of it. Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. Very simple. I got one. Very simple to take apart. You put the tea bag in the cup and 
fill it up with hot water. Brother, that water is hot too. It's boiling. That's the whole secret of making a good cup of tea, my friends, is to have the doggone water boiling when you pour it over the tea. Don't use lukewarm water. Actually, to make that right, I should have poured the water in the cup first and, and made the cup hot so that the water would be really boiling and not lose any of its temperature at first, you see? And then let us, well, let's let it dunk there for a while. There must be some place I can put this. Oh, yes. Now, look, before I forget it, I forgot this last week. I meant to show you this. The... I think it's this week's issue of, of um, Look Magazine. What week is this? Um, the current issue. Current issue of, of uh, Look Magazine. They got a big story in there about the talent scouts winners, or rather the, the kids on the talent scouts show who didn't win but won uh, ever, somewhere else. The audience at the night, uh, during the night that they appeared here didn't pick them as number one, but... Uh, they went on from here and really reached great heights. For instance, here's Mary McCarthy, remember her, and Denise Lohr, and uh, what's this gal's name here? Edith Adams, Russell Knight. Maybe you remember some of them. They were here with us. There's a story called They Lust. They, they Lust. They Lost, but they won off this show. And it's in the Look magazine that's going on now. And I also wanted to call your attention to the fact that Collier's, one of my very favorite magazines, is now a bi-weekly magazine. Maybe you didn't know that. It used to be a weekly, now it's every two weeks. And I thought you might like to know, it's, it's quite a magazine. It's a, I, I love it. It's one of my favorites. I have a letter from a lady who signs herself Chrysalia in Beacon, New York. She says... I am an old maid, 53. I know my men and I know my tea. Just give me Lipton's, a cozy chair. This is one of the nice things about being outdoors. You just throw the tea bag on the grass. <laughs> it's good for it. I know my men and I know my tea. Just give me Lipton's, a cozy chair, and the men can all go, you know where? <laughs> She says, P.S., I like your program, and you're okay, too, for a man. <laughs> oh, listen. Doggone, that's good when it's hot. See, I didn't put anything in it. Just keep, drink it straight. That's me. You can put sugar in it if you like, and cream if you want to, or lemon or something. I just love the flavor of the tea. It's, it's so brisk this Lipton tea, the brisk flavor by itself. I hate to mess it up with sugar or anything. But look, I'd like to suggest something to you. Let me, let me see if I can tell you this right quick, because we don't have too much time. While I was in the hospital, I met a wonderful man named Dr. P.D. White. I think he is recognized all over the world as the greatest heart specialist in medicine today. And he told me a long story which he hopes I'll pass on to you from time to time and I'm going to try to remember to do it because he showed me the statistics I wonder if you knew this I didn't that in 1952 53 percent of the people who died in this country died of heart disease of one kind or another that's one out of every two a little better than that I think it's pretty scary now, he told me some things that they have learned, he and his associates, in the past three or four or five years of their research, the, the latest things, things that you'll be some time hearing about because it takes a long time to get around. And we're going to try to spread them to you once in a while now because maybe it'll save somebody's life. Here's the way Dr. White figures it. He has a motto, don't walk, run. The two great enemies of, of the heart are one, obesity, too much weight, too much to eat, and two, too little exercise. If we watch our diet and keep our weight, and he says that the ideal weight is whatever it was you weighed when you were 25 years old. 
If you can maintain that weight, you'll live a long, long time with little, if any, heart trouble. And if you exercise properly, and I mean a lot of good, violent exercise, not just easy stuff. And to watch the diet, of course, I was just thinking of the tea. That's what made me think of it. When you want something to drink, learn to drink tea. I doubt if there are any calories in it at all. I doubt very much if there are any. There may be a few, but very little, very few. You can drink tea all day long, and it soothes you, it cools you if it's iced, it's refreshing to you if it's hot, and it doesn't add to your caloric intake. Might be a thought. Maybe, maybe you live a little bit longer. I personally have no desire whatsoever to leave this veil of tears. I love it here. <laughs> now let's meet our next talent scout, who is a little gal named Miss Marsha Silberglatt. I hope I have that right. Marsha, come on over here where I can see you. Oh, there she is. Yes, yes, yes. I see how you boys feel. Yes. <laughs> well, howdy. Howdy. Well, how are you? Yeah, come on over close here. Uh, Marcia, how old are you, dear? I'm 19. 19. <laughs> uh, do you go to school? Yes, I go to college. Where? At Barnard. Barnard? Yes. Well, good for you. What are you going to major in? Psychology. Psychology? Yes. <laughs> Can you see me? Yes. Let Can me I see, see you? It. Yes. Can you see mm -hmm. me now? Can you see me on the screen? Yes. Have you uh, gotten any of the principles of psychology yet? <laughs> no. You don't get any message, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the way it goes. <laughs> you heard? Of, did you hear the story about the psychologist that was called in because the parents had a little girl that was just an obstreperous, obnoxious little brat. Nobody could do anything with her. And he came in and she saw him and kicked and fell on the floor and went into tantrums and screamed and hollered. And he went over and picked her up and whispered something in her ear. And she quieted right down and sat on his lap and talked with him and Everything was fine. And as he was about to leave, the parents whispered to him, please tell us, what was it you said that was the most wonderful thing? He said, why, it was simple. I just said, shut up, you little brat, or I'll break your neck. <laughs> well, Marcia, what, what did you, whom did you bring? What did you bring us? I brought Augustin Anyeva. Honey, I can hardly hear you. Will you speak up a little? Uh, I brought Augustin Anyevas. He's a pianist, and he's quite wonderful. Give me his last name again, dear. Anyevas. Anyevas? Yes. Anyevas heard of him. Uh, <laughs> Augustin Anyevas? Yes. Anyevas. That's a nice name. And how old is he? Augustin's 19 also. 19 years old? Almost 19. Both of you. Uh, do you are you college chums? Well, no. My, I met Augustine because he worked with my father, and he showed my father a clipping. My father wanted him to meet the family and wanted us to meet him and hear him. So he came home and played. Fine, fine. What's your daddy do? Well, my father has uh, a messenger service, and Augustine was working there after school. Oh, I see, I see. And where did uh, Augustine uh, study? Uh, he studied... Well, he studied music with his mother, who was his first teacher. That was at three years old. Uh -huh. And he's had scholarships with teachers, and he now has a scholarship to Juilliard, where he'll be studying. Good. Will this be his first professional appearance? No, not at all. He played, well, he played before an audience with his mother when he was four and a half. He played at the home of the Mexican Consul General, and the Mexican Consul General was so impressed that he wanted him to play at a program for Mexican Independence Day at Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. In fact, the, the general cut his speech short so that Augustine could play. Say, and he did. But old Mexico loved him for that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well... But wait! <laughs> so... <laughs> he, there were 
representatives there from uh, both nations, United States and Mexico, and he, uh, well, he, the ambassador from Mexico to the United States asked him to uh, play at a concert at the Pan American Union in Washington. So he played there, and after that, the uh, ambassador was recalled to Mexico. That was two years later. So Augustine came to Mexico um, because he quested it and uh, toured Mexico. And then when he was 12, he toured Central America, South America, and uh, the West Indies. Gee. And wait, and after that... <laughs> now, how old is he now? <laughs> He's 18 and a half. <laughs> No, I mean, how old is he now as we leave South America? Now we're... <laughs> <laughs> You're a he... sweet gal, you know it. And you sure do look so sweet and lovely on that television oh, thank screen. You. Thanks ever so much, honey. We'll put him right out here in the spotlight where everybody can hear him. Thanks to you, but Marcia. He's going to play... Beg well, pardon? He's going to play... Well, he played at the Palace of Fine Arts. He was the only child to play there. And I've got to get it in. He's going to play with the Philharmonic this year. Oh. Because he won a contest. Uh, called talent in our school. That's all. All right. Now, you, that's all now, huh? Okay. All right, honey. We'll put him down at the piano now and see what he sounds like here. Augustin and Nevis. young lad. Now uh, we're going to have to start moving again. Golly whiz, the time is going. Let's get our next talent scout out here quickly, Miss Heidi Peeringer. Where is she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello there, Miss Peeringer. How are you? Hello, Arthur. How are you? Well, I'll tell you how it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you back again. Well, thank you very much. Can you move over here a little bit? Closer? That's okay. a girl. That's, a <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. You're a very pretty girl. What do you do for a Thank living? You. I'm a commercial photography model. By golly, you're well cast for that job. <laughs> Thank you, sir. What, what kind of photography? Oh, uh, I do uh, frigid airs and television sets and Remington electric shavers and uh, cooking ranges. <laughs> 
I don't do any fashion work. I do the odd things. You do the odd things. Yes. Huh? <laughs> You're the gal that, uh, when you uh, are photographed with a refrigerator, do you uh, open the ice trays or? I'm usually You caress the hydrator or what is it you do? <laughs> I usually stand there holding the door open and looking oh, <laughs> very delighted that I see this huge refrigerator in front of me. <laughs> I often think that that must give the engineer who designed the refrigerator a terrible complex. That they have to put a gorgeous gal like you in front of it to make people look at it. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. You sure are nice to look at. Tell me, whom did you bring us right quick? I brought Lorraine Walnick, and uh, she has done a lot of opera work in Youngstown, Ohio, and Pittsburgh with the opera companies there. She has had club dates in Havana, Cuba, uh, in uh, Panama, and in Nassau, and she's done radio work here in New York, and also in Pennsylvania, and in Ohio, and she has done a lot of concerts. <laughs> she's done concert work throughout Pennsylvania, throughout New, <laughs> throughout New York State, and also Ohio. Mm, all right. <laughs> Wrong way. All right. <laughs> I just come over here a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to get well quick now. <laughs> well, uh, see, we, be we better get her on out here quickly or we'll have no time to listen to her, huh? Okay. Thanks ever so much, Heidi. Let's get her on the, on the stage right now. Lorraine Walnick. Thank you. time to judge him. I'm going to make all three of the acts winners tonight and have them with me all next week. Okay? 